morning folks i finally found knock on wood some quiet place where i can record a video i'm in a slip here i don't know where i am I, I'll, I'll go around maybe you guys know i'm not trying to hide the spot but i'm way up river if if you can tell where i am you know this river better than i do but um, I do see perch in this slip. It's hard to tell if it's perch or bait fish. But uh, I mean, if you see that much bait fish, there should be some perch here too. So let's catch some fish. And I actually want to discuss a topic that comes up way too often in my videos. Today, I want to talk to you about tackle durability because one of the most frequent questions is how has this rod or reel held up okay because they they find the old review and they ask me how did this reel held up the last two years or this rod held up the last two years even the shakespeare micro which is a 20 dollar rod Believe it or not, I have been asked more than once, how has this rod held up? I mean, it's a $20 rod, man. Does it matter how did it hold up? What kind of risk are you taking? If you're concerned about the Shakespeare, the $20 Shakespeare rod, I would hate to watch you buy a car. The Shakespeare micro rod has held up excellent no no not even no wear or tear on that rod finally one fish after i'm telling you maybe 10 bites the three inch the three inch shad is just too big for them folks but i don't know if you have noticed let me show you just one fish a eh? ow ow Look at what I'm fishing here, 29 feet deep. See, you think these are all perch, but the big ones are probably perch, but the little fuzzy ones are bait fish, folks. Even bluegill leave bigger marks than this. So this is not all perch. Where was I? Durability and the micro light, right? I don't know if anyone has noticed but I never talk about durability in any of my reviews. Tell me, where have I made a single comment about durability? And the reason for that is... I am extremely, extremely gentle with my tackle. Okay? I mean, first of all, right now, 90% of my fishing, maybe not 90, 95, is from this boat and you've seen my boat everything is clean organized so my rods and reels they have they never have any contact with dirt okay they they are always gently placed on the carpet they sit in the rod holders i mean people do such nasty tackle abuse they just load them up in the truck bed and just truck them around the country and these rods are getting bumped around and probably the line is nicked before they even throw it in the water and then they say the fish broke my line. But I am extremely gentle with my tackle, even when I fish from the bank. I never ever put my rod and reel on the ground. Just absolutely never. It doesn't matter if it's emergency. It doesn't matter if the drag is screaming and one rod is just peeling drag. I will always first place my rod on a rod holder or put it on top of a tackle bag or something like that. The three inch gobi is not working folks. It's not working for me. Not not go with it's a three inch just swim bait. I mean it's working, I'm getting bites, but 
Give me a second folks, I want to get a 2 inch bait. The 3 inch is a little bit too big and I don't want to fish with goby either. Alright folks, I switched back to a 2 inch bait. Because the 3 incher was getting a lot of nibbles but not a lot of connections man. But where was I? Yeah, my tackle never gets contact with sand rocks i mean i i sell some of my rods and reels and they don't have a scratch on them i mean they look used because everything is faded the colors the cork is worn but they don't have a scratch on them on top of that i fish here in the midwest i mean i avoid fishing in the rain we have no salt a couple of times I drop the whole rod and reel in the lake and I go in and recover it and then I do a full cleaning. But really my point is my tackle is used so gently that me telling you that I never got a problem and the reel has held up well, it really has just no value because very few people in the country use the tackle as gently as I do. And yeah, I'm a weekend warrior. I only fish weekends, so I don't fish that much to begin with. So yeah, don't expect me to give you good tackle durability advice. I mean, I don't pretend that. I'm testing my tackle. Well, people say he put it through its paces. That's a very popular cliche. He put it through its paces. And anglers, once they find the cliche, they just repeat it. It has a nice color to it. It has a nice color to it. How does that make sense? To it? He put it through its paces. I haven't put nothing through its paces, folks. So, yeah, not a good judge on tackle durability. I will tell you what I... what experience I have had with failures, though. Pretty much the only tackle that has, that has failed on me is tackle that I bought from AliExpress. I'm not joking with you. I bought two bait runners a few years ago, Yoshikawa, and they look so nice and they were really smooth. I'm telling you these bait runners, if they didn't fail, I think I could almost recommend them. This is why durability is important. I'm not kind of minimizing it. I know it's important for you. For some of you it's really important. These Yoshikawa bait runners, and they were very smooth, light, because they're plastic. I liked everything about them. I used them in the short trips. I almost made a video about them when one day I got a big run and I flipped the bait runner to set the hook and I just hear Krrr. and I try to set the hook and I hear more Krrr. and the bait runner broke and the whole reel inside was done it was screwed see all my fish is gone now so I tried to fix it but I don't know inside this bait runner was not very simple you think that Chinese bait runner reels are simple, but it wasn't simple. And while... Oh man, there's no... The only fish I see now is behind me. While I was trying to fix it, I had another trip. The same thing happened with the other one. Okay. So, this is pretty much the only failure with reels I have ever had. These two bait runners. And they were from AliExpress. Definitely don't recommend Yoshikawa bait runners. 
Then the only failure with a rod I have had is again you saw it on video one aliexpress rod just snapped when i was lifting an i don't know very small crappie i don't know if it was an even an eight inch crappie And it snapped and people told me oh high sticking yeah I know all about high sticking guys but come on if there is one thing I'm good at is lifting dinks and one thing that I have experience with is lifting dinks I don't know how many people have lifted more dinks in the last three years than me so I know all about high sticking, but that rod was just either damaged by me during transportation or just defective out of the box. And this is the only failures I have ever had with the rods or reels. But I will add one more thing. Man. I will add one more thing before I let you go. When it comes to high-end tackle, these questions about durability, that's, that's something different. If you're talking about whatever hundred dollar reel you're concerned with, that's one thing. But if you're asking me if these JDM rods have held up, that's really this question I don't think is as appropriate because I mean if, if this worries you you shouldn't be buying JDF tackle because I mean this stuff is very expensive you can't return it if I, I really my advice on, on this is only buy JDM tackle if you can afford to lose it guys do not buy it if you know if something happens and you're screwed just it's too early for you to go there just buy something reasonable from united states there is plenty of good tackle like this hmx rod right here what's wrong with this rod zirconium insert stainless steel brushed guides beautiful blank beautiful color what's wrong with this rod matches perfectly with the old ci4 while well, he inhaled that bait while well, he inhaled it oh my god this is going to be a problem my god he inhaled it good yeah but on jdm tackle honestly i'm not kidding what are these questions has it held up i mean most of that stuff i don't know if you can tell from my videos it's absolutely ridiculously thin it's 99.9 percent .9 carbon it's less than one millimeter thin how do you think it's gonna hold up to any kind of nicks or any kind of damage or any kind of abuse it's not going to hold up very well. I can tell you without just even listening to your question which particular rod you're interested in. If it's a $350 Japanese rod, it's not going to hold up to abuse. You have to be prepared to transport the rod in extreme care. You cannot just put it in the in the boxes in the boat here. Uh, I transport my eradicator in the Subaru, inside the car. So, yeah, durability is going to be... I haven't had anything break on me. I even nicked the Abu Garcia a few times. 
mostly in the ceiling inside my place. My heart just stopped the last time. I really hit it in the ceiling pretty good. Just my heart stopped for a moment. And the ceiling was even scratched, but luckily it didn't break. But you have to be just when you buy one of these rods, just buy them and write them off because stuff will happen and then you're gonna get angry and you're gonna blame everybody. I have no bait again. Give me a second to put another bait. Alright folks, I got a new bait but I don't see much fish. Except by the wall over there. Oh this barge is coming. Is he saying he's coming here? Hopefully he's not coming to this slip, but even if he is, I don't care very much. I'm not doing very well here. Look at this. Only dinky the dinks. Dinky, oh! At least he didn't swallow. I can release him without feeling guilty. Reposition a little bit. Turn the boat around a little bit since I only see fish next to the wall right now. Oh, I already have a fish, and guess what? He's a giant. Gotta find some tournament where they're just counting fish and don't care about the size. I'm gonna do really well. Even if it's a bass tournament, you'll be surprised how many bass dings I catch on a normal crappy trip. Okay, there is a good school right next to the wall. We should be getting good action here. Nibbly right away. Nibbly. Three nibbly, no fish. This drop shot, the hookup rate is just not what I'm used to with the jig heads. My jig heads, you just get a fish almost every nibbly by the way perch fishing this year has been tough let me tell you I know you don't believe me because you see fish after fish but this is once you find them and only if you have really finesse tackle Because it takes it takes a, a lot of time to find them folks. They're different place every day. I haven't fished two days in a row in the same place 
and then even when you find them you know I don't see I don't see any boats around me catching any fish it's I'm telling you quite a few people gave up on perch fishing this year they just gave up it's a struggle you can't find the fish you find them they don't bite it's been very different you see a lot of fish on the electronics but they just don't bite You know what I'm talking about, a few of you gave up already. I think we started perch fishing this year a little prematurely because the weather is not cold enough yet for the big schools to move in. I mean there are some big schools here but probably there would be more fish now if Um, if the weather was colder I don't want it to get colder though I'm on the border of what I can tolerate above freezing I can kind of manage but below freezing I don't like it doesn't matter if fishing is good or not below freezing is too much for me Yeah, a lot of people gave up on perch fishing this year. Maybe they just temporarily they're waiting until it cools off. But even the boats on the ramp. On Thanksgiving there were so many boats on the ramp. I don't see that many boats on the ramp today. It's a Sunday. Perch fishing has been tough this year. I don't see nothing again. Hmm. Nibbly, nibbly. It's just difficult for them to eat it because... There we go. Hey, this one feels decent. Like a 9 inch. Nah, he's just an... No, he's not even an 8. I don't know why he felt decent. He is hooked properly. No foul play. He felt decent. See how many boats around me. Yeah. Now one thing I don't like is people fishing with the engine running. It's annoying even if I wasn't recording a video, it's just annoying. Wow, the only fish I see is right up against the wall. I'm gonna move forward a little bit because this boat behind me came and parked right behind me and left the engine running. Extremely unfortunate if you're trying to record the video. Oh, is this a keeper? I love this HMX rod. This is the light six foot light not ultra light it has a very slow action just perfect parabolic action it's not that good for jigging recovery recovery is not that fast as it is with slow with all slow action rods No, I'm not gonna spot lock. This thing is just... It's just dumb, dumb. If there is no wind like today, spot lock is just... useless. Wow, I see a lot of fish by this wolf ox. 
I don't know if they all purge, but yeah, they're right up against the wall here. Come on, come on, load up. Nibli, nibli, but no bite. Maybe there's mostly bait fish. There we go. They feel good, but they're all always small. Why so small? I don't know if I showed you any fish today, but I mean, it's just so hard. Ah. Because they're too small to grab them in the mouth. Oh, look how there's a little hump here. I don't know if you can see. The perch is right on top of the hump. I don't know if this is perch though. These marks are so small that it's probably bait fish. And even bluegill leaves bigger marks than this. Bluegill actually leaves decent marks because they're pretty, you know, they're panfish. They're pretty round. They leave good marks. A six, seven inch bluegill is gonna give you a nice mark. You're gonna confuse it with a crappie a lot of times. But I'm gonna catch one more fish and end this video because it's getting long. Let's see how I'm gonna end the video on a high note or a low note. Maybe this here is bait fish. Uh, there is at least one perch. Yeah, I feel we're gonna end the video on a low note, folks. But hey, I do appreciate every one of you stopping to check my stuff watching the video all the way to the end I don't take that for granted folks because I know today oh I feel bad for the poor guy I don't want to extend his jaw like this I know that today everybody has a YouTube channel so yeah I do appreciate you coming to see my videos Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.